Blog Hello. Talk Radio. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Wow, that is definitely a oldie but goodie. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And perfect for the occasion because uh, we can't make it without each other on this earth, and we definitely need to have people that do different things, that have different jobs and serve different purposes down here to make things move, to make the world go in its perfect circle every single day. So, you know, we're just honored to have Energy Matters on tonight. And um, I just can't wait to get into this. I'm a a newbie to the agriculture, even though I have, I do have a, um, a plot in my backyard that my husband started and he was growing vegetables. Yeah, it's a couple of years back there, but I never went out there. And I, I think I I should be the one out there, so I just can't wait to hear what he has to say. <laughs> and my sister oh. knows we had everything, cucumbers and green peppers yes, and so herbs. Hot peppers. And, <laughs> and, you know, he's more excited about it than me, so I need I need to switch that up. So I'm pretty sure Energy Matters can help us with this. <laughs> I am pretty sure. Well, without further ado, I'd like to welcome on Mr. Energy Matters. Welcome to the Goddess Suite. Hello? 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 Okay, hold on. That's not. Let me check real quick. Okay. But, yes, that gardening, I think it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful thing to be able to start your own, do your own type of gardening. And mm-hmm. one thing you know, you know it's not going to be toxic because uh, you know what absolutely. you're actually putting into your fruits and your vegetables. And I think if you along with the intent and the love and, you know, and the nurturing that you do with your plants. Like our grandmother, she she was a woman that had a green thumb, and she would talk to her plants as she was watering them, and they would grow so long, and her friends always would ask for a piece of her plant. So I I think that, you know, we should have inherited that trait, too. I believe that it's in us, but... We just have to probably start doing it more often to be able to, you know, kind of carry on that tradition. Absolutely, absolutely. And I used to did not like gardening <laughs> and going down North Carolina with our grandmother and being outside. I just did not like it growing up. But as you get older, you get wiser and you understand all of this was, you know, like training, like, you know, for your uh, mm-hmm. evolution as you get older. Because this stuff that um, we were learning as children, we really, really can utilize it in case of something, you know, happening in the world where you can't get to the grocery store. Because, you know, we do have to kind of think like that to think for the, mm-hmm. you know, prepare for the worst. Think, think for the best, but definitely prepare for the worst. Yeah, most definitely, and it just it just helps to be able to have knowledge of different different plants, different herbs. Um, we have a local herbalist here in the Washington D.C. area who does herb walks, and he shows you different herbs and what the benefits are, and tells you how you can make teas and herbal formulas out of them. So. I think I just think that it's important for us to know how to do that also. Mhm, mhm, absolutely, absolutely. And then, as though we are people of the earth, <laughs> we should mm-hmm. definitely know how to, um, you know, take advantage. Because when you are in in that soil and getting your hands deep down, you're creating a whole nother connection and energy with uh, Mother Earth. So. 
And, and if you think about it, you know, our ancestors, that's what they did in the sun all day, all evening, mm-hmm. you know. Exactly. Working the land. So it's definitely a blessing to have that that knowledge um, that could be passed down to the generations. Uh, like one of the goddesses, oh, I'm sorry, Sister Love, she's not able to be on tonight, but she had a friend that was from Africa, and he talked about how over in Africa the the people were so connected with the forest and nature that it was not unusual to see a tree uproot itself and move somewhere else in the forest. Um, mm-hmm. Their people knew how to communicate with the plants. The plants spoke to them, you know, not in the way that we would hear as in a human way, but in a way that is intuitive. And also you can look at a lot of plants and fruits and vegetables and pretty much tell what part of the body that they're good for. You split open a walnut, and a walnut looks like a brain when you open it up. And and we all know that walnuts are good for our brain. Um, a tomato, you cut it open, it looks like the chambers of a heart. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, so many different things that's connected um, because we're connected to everything, and you see that every day in everyday life, you know. That's the amazing part of that. Yeah, it is. It was like just being in touch, you know. Mhm, mhm. And it's like, and it's things that we've known, but you know, sometimes things get planted away in our brain, and we get consumed with other things. But when you start to really open your eyes and start to study. <laughs> plants and really look at them, you'll say, wow, that does look like a body part or whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I mean, every day it fascinates me how you can see how everything is connected more and more, you know? Like today, I've seen a picture of a placenta that's, you know, part of the mother when she's pregnant, the part that they pull out that the baby feeds off of. Uh-huh. And it looks it looks like the symbol of the tree of life. It looks just mm-hmm. like it. Yeah. And I mean it's just so many different ways things connect, you know. And um that's why it's just good to kind of be aware and pay attention to the smallest details because it helps sharpen your intuition and it helps you um become more um connected to things spiritually, you know. But I thought that was amazing <laughs> that how you know how it looked so much like the tree of life, and you know it's just everything over like the the inside of a, a car engine is is built like your colon, mhm, you know, or the inside of your body, you know you have different parts, so everything and is mhm, you know, I was just gonna say everything is you know interconnected, so. Mm-hmm. It it is, and to, to piggyback off of Mystic Feather about the car engine, and you should treat your colon just the same way you treat your engine when you go get uh, mm-hmm. oil change every three thousand miles. You know, same thing with your body. You want to do a detox every, you know, maybe every three months. Do a colon cleanser every three months. Maybe a um. Maybe a little more often if you're a heavy meat eater, but we have to start treating, taking just as good care of our bodies as we do our worldly possessions, car, jewelry, you know, mm-hmm. those those type of things. So we can just honor honor these beautiful temples that we've been given and keep them running. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, let's see if Energy Matters is on the line yet. No, he's not on the line yet. All right. Okay, guys, well, we're going to keep the show rolling. <laughs> um, what, I, what we can go into is talking about 
fruits and vegetables that look like the body parts so you know what is good for you and um, how you don't need a book really to tell you, oh, this is good for that. Because believe me, trust me, like we just said, everything is in connection with um, with everything, parts of our body and everything. So let's get into that. Okay. okay. Because, you know, and I'm still kind of, if you all didn't check our show last Thursday, I'm kind of still a little high off of that show <laughs> because <laughs> we definitely discussed some things on that show. And, um, Unfortunately, uh, Holistic Gal wasn't on that show, but we're going to be having a lot more shows discussing uh, melanated extraterrestrials and um, melanated people who are in direct connection with ETs because uh, this is a taboo topic in our community. And, you know, it's, it's strange, you know, because we think that, you know, humans are it, like, the only species of the animals that are existing out here in the world. And when, if you, you know, we can never think the thoughts of the creator, but you have to think that there are way more life forms out there than just us. <laughs> we got to think outside that box. Right. So we mm-hmm. actually have, you know, people that actually, you know, experience and see these beings. And um, actually I had, I was talking to, um, someone last night on the phone and, you know, I was just explaining to her <laughs> about how um, one of the lecturers was, was saying that, you know, you think Mars, that they're going to take people to Mars that are intelligent and all of this. He said that people are already up on, on Mars, the people they go missing, the degenerates, the homeless, the runaway teens. And he said it's already colonized up there. And I'm not surprised because, um, you know, this is a very strange world we live in. And, I mean, the oceans are, haven't even been tapped. You know, we've only tapped, what, 3% of the oceans? So we don't know what's out there, really. You know, That's we watch right. TV. Yeah, because we watch a lot of TV. And we believe everything they tell us on the TV screen but they're not going to tell us that, oh, yeah, we don't know what's in the Himalayas. We don't know what's in uh, Antarctica or the North Pole. It's, you know, they're not going to tell us that. So on TV, it looks like everything's been explored and everybody has the answers, but they really don't, you know. So you have to broaden your mind and 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 really know that um, there are a lot of mystical things out there that we haven't, even began to scratch the surface with. And we know that there are extraterrestrials because of um, documents that have been blacked out, um, presidents that have spoken on it, and all um, sorts of other types of subjects and people witnessing them themselves. And, you know, and I used to think it was a bunch of mess. What did you think, Holistic Gal? Yeah, I think so, too. I used to think the same thing. You know, because I never heard of our people going through nothing like that. Mm-mm. So now that I'm here, what, that our people actually have been going through this, but in another way, I'm like, oh, we need to talk about this. Because for years, we always sweeping things under the rug. We don't want to talk about them. You know, all these skeletons are in the closet. But this is something that we need to talk about, you know. Yeah. So we will be, you know, <laughs> we will definitely be having um, guests on, you know, so um, that we'll be discussing this. So we just wanted to keep you all abreast to stay tuned because this is something that, you know, will blow your mind. I mean, we, the lady that we had on the last show, Fleur Braun, she is a melanated contactee and she has a host of friends. She says for some reason in Newark, New Jersey, the hood, she knows a lot of people that are going through this, the abductions, but it's not in a bad way, you know, as it's been reported by a lot of our um, Caucasians, you know, their experiences sound very scary and very horrific, but um, that's not the case 
um, for a lot of the melanated people because our people actually, um, if you know anything about tribes and um, the Native Americans and the Africans, they always speak of people. From, they always say that they don't come from here. They come from the star system anyway. So I'm definitely, definitely, um, definitely can't wait till we have some more people on that have experienced this and um, that are ready just to know more about uh, life in a different way and, and that aren't thinking on a matrix scale. Mm-hmm. You know, so, and always remember this as that we have a set of universal laws, and there are a lot of them. So if you ever have time to Google the universal laws, just look them up. But one specific thing that the uh, young lady that was on the show was saying, she said that they, uh, as one of the universal laws, they have to show you what's to come, and that's part of the, one of the laws. So this is why they put a lot of this stuff in movies because part of the law is they have to sh- let you know what they're doing. It's kind of like when you think about it, Halicia, you know how you're riding down um, the parkway and you see the police car sitting there because he has to show you that he's there. He has to show you that he's uh, um, a force of authority, but also he can't be hiding in the bushes and then come and pull you over. Had right out in the, in the grass. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so it's kind of like that for this situation. Far as the unit, it, it's, it's, it ties in with the universal law, even though they're following a man-made law. But it's still, mm-hmm. um, once again, another connection is still connected to that universal law. So when you're watching movies, don't look at these movies as fantasy. And um, just something that's fly by night to entertain you because a lot of truth is in these movies because it has to be shown to you. So, um, net, oh, hold on here. Is that Energy Matters, Pusta Gal? Um, mm-hmm. Let me see. No, I don't think so. Mm-mm. Okay. All right, all right, guys. Well, we're sh- we're sure that um, he's going to be on soon. Um, we'll just keep Thank talking you. and <laughs> and um, hopefully, you know, we'll answer the phone if you have any questions. I know we're talking off topic, but <laughs> you know, this is his specialty right here, and I don't know the first thing about farming my own food. So <laughs> I'm just talking about things I like to talk about. So um, I just wanted to throw a movie out there um, that Fleur Braun had suggested we watch that actually goes into a lot of the things that's going on with the people coming up missing and whatnot. It's a movie called Under the Skin. And um, if you get a chance, check that movie out because, um, yeah, it pretty much goes in deep about the human harvesting that's going on. As we've we've learned on our show, melanated bodies on the black market go for $10 million and the non-melanated body goes for one $1 million, meaning that a lot of these people that are going missing, um, they are being used for their body parts on the black market um, as donors, um, uh, people that are in need of heart transplants and um, liver transplants and things like that. They are being harvested. And so... Um, if you don't know, when we when we die, a melanated person dies, there is a lot of melanin that sits in our organs, our heart, liver, um, heart, liver, spleen, all of those organs, they're heavily melanated. And I don't know if anybody has heard this, but melanin on the black market goes for $333 a gram. So it is worth more than platinum and gold and silver. Wow. Now, we don't, yeah, we don't need to inject this in us, but 
there are people who are not melanated who do use what they call this synthetic version of melanin to make themselves darker, to uh, increase um, uh, their lifespan, to um, stay healthier. Uh, is it, there's definitely um, there's definitely a difference in our genetic makeup. So as you can see, this is why someone that is melanated would be a hot commodity and, you know, coming up missing because it seems like now more than ever more black people are coming up missing than, you know, than ever in history. It used to didn't be like that. And um, actually Tyler Perry, he did a, um, a story, well, they did a story on Tyler Perry in the Jet Magazine because he was, you know, he wanted to know where these people going, so he did a story on it. And I think they're supposed to be producing some sort of movie on the uh, missing people of color. So, um, you know, don't believe the hype. Don't believe that we're not worth anything, that we don't matter, because the truth of the matter is we're <laughs> we're worth more than gold, silver, or platinum. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so, mm-hmm. and I never forget Bobby Hemmings addressing this um, when he came to D.C. and he got picked up from the airport and he was talking about uh, the guy that picked him up. I believe was for the coroner, and mm-hmm. at the time back, yeah, back in the eighties and nineties, D.C. was like murder capital, so a lot of black people were getting killed. But the the doctors and scientists were requesting all of these black people's pineal glands. Now, we know melanin has been under heavy study for the past 20, 25 years, and we know that scientists do not waste time studying something that does not have any um, value. And then why would they study something like melanin that is supposedly be from people who they consider degenerate or less than an animal? Why would they study something like that? Because they know the power in the melanin. Exactly. And, so, and you know, soon um, at the Goddess Week, we will be offering something that we've been researching for a while now, and you can research it too. It's called the Shaga Mushroom, C-H-A-G-A. And the Shaga Mushroom contains more melanin than any plant, herb, anything known to man. It was used yes. in uh, ancient Asia, it's been used over 4,600 years. It was known miracle as uh, drug. Anti- I mean, yes. a miracle yes. herb. herb. Mushroom, <laughs> miracle <laughs> mushroom. Mm-hmm. I, yes. <laughs> no secular <laughs> <laughs> no drug here yet. They probably use it as a base for some of their pharmaceutical drugs like they do all the other herbs. Yeah, and then add, know, the po- add their poison to it. Exactly, exactly. Because actually you can take the shaga mushroom and uh, Caucasian people can rub it in their skin to tan, to use it to get their skin color darker. It's so many. You, I mean, this mushroom is so powerful. It can, I mean... I can't even go into the depth of it. That's why I said just Google it. And it's also being researched for cancer, for HIV, is doing yeah. wonderful things for those ailments. Um, I think it has. That was the one at National Library of Medicine that it was um, shrinking breast and liver tumors. Yes. Yes, it was because mm-hmm. it, absorbs, it absorbs radiation. And it absorbs. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you now once again connection, because when you go look it up and see a picture of it, the first thing you're going to say is, "Oh my God, it looks like a tumor." Mhm, it does. So that's the clue. Of what is once again how we were talking about the the uh, walnut looking like a brain, and okay, so this particular mushroom it looks like a growth or a tumor, and it absorbs. All the junk in your body. I mean, it does miracles 
but it's a lot of people who have been battling HIV and cancer uh, have been getting, like, wonderful results off of this particular um, medicinal mushroom. And Exactly. And, do wanna... and, the, and NIH could not even deny it. Even if you Google National Library of Medicine and put sh- chaga in, you'll see the results for yourself. They can't they can't even deny this herb. So well this mu- uh, mushroom. I keep saying herb, I'm yeah. herbal. So but yeah. it is woof, it is powerful. And I've been I've been taking it let me see, I guess it's been about no, that's another one. I'm sorry guys, that's another Look, I'm a holistic guy. I try a lot of different things. Wrong product, you know. <laughs> Wrong mushroom, <laughs> I'll say. <laughs> right, right. Well, I, well, I take it. I ordered some just to see for myself. Now, the second day I took it, I felt like uh, felt like like little sharp pains in where my kidneys would be, and. Um, I felt like it it only lasted for like a day, so I had to look up and see side effects and, and things like that. It really doesn't have any side effects, but it does draw out any inflammation, any disease um, that's in the body. Uh, it's good for um, autism, high blood pressure. I wrote a couple of PowerPoints on it because it was just so amazing, um, the benefits of it. Now, we don't carry it yet. We were trying to find the best, the best of the best before we decided to carry it. But if you would like to purchase it, I just wanted to let you all know to make sure you get 100% Siberian Chaga Extract. I'm sorry. 100% Siberian Chaga Extract because, because the Chaga, since it absorbs, Radiation. So if you were on chemotherapy and you went through um, a lot of radiation treatments, it would absorb all of that and eliminate it out of your body. So just like it absorbs out of your body, if you were in, um, if you were, um, you wanted to get some of it and it was growing in, uh, let's say, Japan or someplace that's highly, um, polluted with radiation in the air system, then it would absorb that too. So you don't want to order from places like China, um, certain places in the United States you don't want to order it from. But to be on the safe side, look for 100% Siberian Shaga extract. And the extract is better for you than the pill because the extract goes straight in the bloodstream. So if you know somebody that's battling cancer, is battling HIV, I just suggest that, you know, you do some research. I mean, you'll see for yourself. It's like a wonder drug. Um, mm-hmm. And it's also good for weight loss because uh, in ancient Asia, there were people who lived at the bottom of the mountain that were, um, you know, they ate more um than the people that lived at the top of the mountain. And the people at the top of the mountain, they were poor, you know, so they didn't have access to um, a lot of the food and and um, animals and things like that that the people at the bottom of the hill had. But they did have the shaga that was growing on the birch trees. So they would drink something, because they didn't have food, they would drink something called soup tea. And that was, that was them taking the shaga and steeping it, and they would drink that, and they would be sustained. So they noticed that the people at the bottom of the hill lived to be 50. The people that lived at the top of the hill that were drinking the soup water, they were living to be 80 and 90 years old. And it was, I mean, it was so renowned, this this mushroom was so renowned that the emperor he was being so greedy with it that he was get he wanted all the birch trees cut and the shaga taken from the trees so he can hoard it all to himself to stay young. So, I mean, it's, it's some interesting history with this shaga mushroom. So I would just say, you know, do your research on it yourself and find a good distributor until we can get 
the best we can offer here. But but if you can't wait, get you some and get yourself healthy because, you know, we're all about um, trying to, you know, keep our people healthy and keep our people strong and educated on uh, the best things that are for our body. You know, it's time for us to be our own doctors. You know, stop making the the doctor your god of your health because it's your health. When you go to the doctor, you tell them your symptoms, they get the book, and they pick out what might be wrong. They don't even know. That's why I call it that. You know, they're still trying to figure out really what exactly is wrong with you. They don't know. They just know what you're telling them. And that's why but it's if, called practicing, practicing medicine because uh-huh. they're practicing. They give you a drug for something. They have you come back in a couple of months. They ask you how you know is it working? Is your pain being relieved, or is your blood pressure down? And if not, they take that, take you off of that medication, bring another one in, switch it out, and practice with another medication. So you have to really do your research um, when you get these prescriptions. Look them up and look up the side effects of them because I deal with a lot of people that they have no idea what the side effects of their medication is. And that's just, it's sad because we can sit around and watch TV and spend countless hours watching reality reality TV, but we won't even go on the computer and Google what, what are the... Um, symptoms or pre-indications of taking this medication. So we just have to be careful and, once again, um, take take health in your hands. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, absolutely. And, um, and also, because I notice a lot of times when people go to the doctor, the doctor will steer your your mind and put your mind in a whole other place when they give you a diagnosis. And I'm sorry, I have, um, I said that wrong when I said that it's called diagnosis. She was right, it's practical. But when a doctor gives you a diagnosis, you know, next thing the person does, they go into depression, you actually kill yourself because of uh-huh. the mental seed that they planted in your mind that you have this terminal disease, which makes people just die faster. And then some people want to go out with all this melancholy and drama and all of this. So, you know, a lot of times when you try to introduce alternative ways of healing and medicines to people, if they're resistant, love them, you know, play their game, play whatever script they wrote for them, for themselves in this life and leave it be because it's nothing you can do to talk to them into taking these herbs to keep themselves together. You know, it's just, it is what it is because some of us wrote our stories down here and, you know, some people want to go out, you know, with breast cancer and their loved ones by their side and everybody crying. Some people want, some people don't want to heal themselves. So, you know, we want our loved ones to live a long time. So when we offer and make um, and want to make their lives better, if you get rejection, you know, don't take it personal because, you know, it's just some people are just, you know, they just have their, their life, on a subconscious level, already planned out a certain way, and it's nothing against you. You know, all you can do is really just love that person. And, um, and you know, because I've had that experience with people, you know, around me, and you want them to be healthy, you want them, you know, to extend their life, but if they want to to do their thing and have their own habits and, you know, say they're going to die or something, then you know you just let it be, and and um, and don't get you know upset or discouraged from that. Because I'm gonna tell you this: we went to my uncle's funeral, and um, there was a man there sitting at the table who was 90, 
I think he was 95 or 99 years old. Holistic gal. This man, I, oh my God. Yeah, this man, he said, he, I observed him the whole time, the whole day, because he, he, he looked, there was something different about him, but it wasn't that I was looking because of his age, because he looked like he was in the 60s or something. But this man was smoking all day long, just puff, 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 smoking cigarettes all day long. And so, <laughs> so we were sitting at the table with him, and my cousin had her her um, grandbaby there at the table, so he was like, oh, let me put this cigarette out. So she was like, well, it ain't do nothing to you. <laughs> so, you know, not to say that, you know, it's doing that to the baby, but... She was saying, well, it ain't do nothing to you. I mean, the man looks like he runs miles every day, and, <laughs> you know, he's just living the life. But, you know, this is how life works. You know, everybody is not destined to die and drop dead because they, you know, smoke a cigarette or do something like that. So That's true because you sometimes you have runners who have bad hearts and people that are in – what you know, so called tip top shape and drop dead. So, you know, you just <laughs> you don't know. You wanna you know, you wanna try to take care of your temple as best you can, but I don't I don't believe in um you know, um what's the word? Not mm-hmm. resist. Um if I'm basically what I'm trying to say is, if I want something, I'm going to eat it, you know. <laughs> and but I think it's just all about balance. Like you don't want a diet just full of meat, nothing, nothing, nothing meat, no vegetables, nothing, nothing, nothing. You know, no nothing to push that meat through. You, and then you have some people that are vegan, vegetarian that may, you know, they don't look as healthy as someone that's a meat eater. So it's all about balance. You want to make sure that even if you are vegan or vegetarian, that you're still getting the nutrients, you know, because I've, some of them, they just, they have that southern look with the circles under their eyes and they look kind of frail, you know, and you can tell they're just not getting enough, but you have to eat more because you're just doing vegetables, so you have to eat more of it because meat, that's what, weighs more than a salad. So you have to eat more salads just to be able to match match up to if you're eating meat with rice or potatoes or whatever. So I think right, it's a, exactly. it's a healthy balance in life. Yeah, yeah. That's what you got to do. Just have balance in, as in everything because, you know, you do want to enjoy life. You don't want to just... <laughs> Be a stiff, and then you get hit by a bus. You know, so you wanna, you wanna um, go with the punches, but you know, whatever, whatever your spirit is telling you to do, you know. Right. I feel that that's the best way to handle that situation. <laughs> yes, indeed. I truly believe that. <laughs> right. I think we have um, a caller on. Let's see. All right. Eric Code 540, question, comment, or sipping tea? Oh, I, I guess I'm sipping tea. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. This is me, Nubian and Twist. Hello, hey, Nubian and Twist. Twist. <laughs> I didn't know I was on. Hello. Well, I do have a question. Uh, Let me see. Mm -hmm. Uh, As far as nutrition and eating well, is there a website, I'm sure there is, where I can, you know, research or look at or order this mushroom so I can put it on my keg, which is my midsection, and shrink it down? (laughs) <laughs> okay, I'm going to I'm going to let out a little secret cuz I have found what I believe is the best site that carries it for the best price because <clears throat> there was a company I was dealing with and they want $100 for how many mm-hmm. for a bottle I, I don't know how many 
I don't know, is it 90 or 60 in the bottle, maybe? I'm not sure. Yeah, and I personally don't want to endorse that because I think that's too much. Because when I started looking around, <clears throat> that was, <laughs> it was not that much, you know. Um, and plus it was in pill form, so it's best to take it in the tincture. So um, the website I did find was called Earth Herbs, and that's www.earth. And instead of spelling herbs, it's, it's e a r t h e r b s dot com. So it's only one H. Mm-hmm. And they have wonderful information. They have a question and answer um, on there. And also, out of all the places I checked, <clears throat> they were the only ones that offer a notarized letter of the quality and the purity of the shock. So, you know, you're getting the real deal with this company. Okay. So, yeah, so you really just, you know, like like I said, do your own research because it's um, worth it. And they, uh, their um, shock was like, what, twelve ninety nine a bottle? It was, it was, it was very cheap. It was very, re- very reasonable. <laughs> You know, and you're getting the pure stuff. I mean, I don't know um, how pure the stuff is in a capsule form, but they were they were talking about when you take the capsule, it's hydrochloric acid, and by the time you break down the hydrochloric acid, you know, you're eliminating the sugar. So it's not really um, doing your body any good. And also, mm. I believe they, I believe they sell the tea form. Um, which you can look for also on Amazon or um, online and make you tea with it. Well, I understand Some you guys tea. have a tea form that uh, a product that you're selling for weight loss. You say what? I thought you guys had a tea that you were selling for weight loss. Oh, the ISO tea. Well, we do sell that. However, <laughs> it's on back order for three weeks. So, you know, a lot of times I notice with that is that when we tell people it's on back order, they want it right then and there. They want it when they want it. And so we were doing, we're just going, you know, I'm going to just be honest because we were doing, we were going to be um, distributing this tea, but it was for another company. And, you know, we really, really... After we see how hard we have to grind for somebody else, we really wanted to create our own blend, our own teas, because we know that we can give you way more than what this company has to offer for the price that they have to offer. So we were like, you know, we'll wait, you know, till the time is right and and put our own tea out there to get the best quality because once again you don't want to put your name on stuff that you know isn't going to be the best for the people that are supporting you so that's that's how I felt about it oh, hold on okay um, that's wonderful that's good news um, <clears throat> so uh, as far as growing your own vegetables <clears throat> with all the uh the different foods that are in these stores today are contaminated, Mm -hmm, laced with mm pesticides. And I saw a YouTube video where they were contaminating watermelon and and injecting it with some kind of chemical. I'm not sure what it was. And they were also Mm -hmm. contaminating contaminating pickles and peas. They were soaking this stuff in some kind of chemical and packaging this stuff. And it's pretty sad that the so-called Agenda 21, which is the depopulation of Earth, they're doing a damn good job at it by putting it in our food and our water. So it's pretty hard to try to find pure food these days unless you try to grow your own food. However, I thought about that from the standpoint that the soil that we use is also contaminated. And if you try to go buy with that are uh, organic, how do you know it's really organic when they're producing it? So what do we really have that's pure enough that we can use (laughs) 
grow our own damn food and mm-hmm. not get sick, even though you think you're doing the right thing. Yeah, absolutely. Isn't that like putting you on a rock in a hard place because you you can't grow dirt. You have to get it from somewhere. And who's to say that when they lay the dirt out to package it that they didn't throw something in it that you're going to use and say organic, and then all of a sudden you're growing a penis and you're a female. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. This is human depopulation at its finest. They are doing so many different things to kill us all. It's ridiculous. But the only thing that we can do, I mean, really, the way I feel about it, speak life over your food. Every it is a reason you have to bless your food. And when you're blessing your food, think positive thoughts about your food. Um, because the mind is the most mightiest sword that we have right now to shift this energy because they're killing us off daily. If they're not mm-hmm. snatching us up somewhere, then they're putting in our food. If they're not putting in our food, they're putting it in the air. If they're not putting in our air, they're putting it in the electronics, the TV, uh, sending radio waves. There's so many different ways that they are killing us off. So... What we can do to survive in this matrix is what we've been doing, keeping your thoughts clean, keeping your thoughts positive, and not letting anybody steal your power because they love that. They feed off of that. Mm-hmm. You know, when we get in those states of depression, they're blessed. They're, they're what they call emotional vampires. They suck all of that energy off because they want to keep us in a suppressed, depressed state. But we have all the power that we need inside of us. It's just that we're just walking dead right now. But the people that do continue to keep those thoughts positive, you know, together, I believe we can um, can bring um, a shift in the energy. But places like, um, what is it, Mon- Monsanto? Monsanto? Monsanto. Uh, yeah, the one that, yeah, the generally, I mean, genetically modified um, hybrid food that they create. They also own part of Whole Foods. So, oh, my God. Yeah, so you go to Whole Foods thinking you're going to get some organic food, and you are sadly mistaken. Look that up. Mm-hmm. You know, that's not happening. So it's yeah. everywhere. So what do you what do? I heard Monsanto <laughs> is basically a pesticide company that makes that freaking stuff that we throw on our lawns. Yeah. They create, mm-hmm. they also make her of the uh, uh, Roundup and stuff like that. Wow. Wow. I mean, I'm telling you, we're, we're getting hit, bombarded. Another thing we can do is detoxify our system. We can't keep everything out. You know, you got to think about it. You you wash your hair. How many products is in shampoo? How many products are in, I mean, chemicals? How many chemicals are in shampoo? How many chemicals are, are in toothpaste? You got to get as natural as possible. Baking soda, peroxide, and essential oil for your teeth. You know, yes. you, you just got to get back to the basics of things because the way things are going, it looks like, it's going to be very basic real soon. I don't know about for people who live more in the metropolis areas, but um, how that's going to turn out. But uh, people who are living, you know, more in rural areas, they have more of an advantage, I believe, <laughs> in case. Uh, yeah, I believe so. that because last mm-hmm. this past November I had the opportunity to go to <clears throat> Valdosta, Georgia, and my father mm-hmm. lived there. And I, we were, well, it was nighttime when we made it to this, his uh, wife's family's house. And by us being way back up in those woods, it was a little scary for me because I'm like, damn, I know I live in the country, but this is real country here. Well, mm-hmm. off, into the, off in my vision, you can see in the dark if you focus long enough, you can actually see without light. And I was able to see some things in that darkness. I mean, when I say dark, it was super dark back there. So when I met the family, I said, hey, you know, um, I've never been here before, but from what I can tell, is there uh, marijuana back there? <laughs> <laughs> said, yeah. 
they are growing marijuana and they they have a field and they have marijuana. They grow all of their vegetables, fruits and vegetables, and that's a family land that's been there forever, forever, forever. So therefore, Monsanto's or Monsanto's, whoever they're called, they can't go back mm-hmm. there and contaminate that land. Oh, so yeah. people who have nope. property and, and acreage of land can be able to buy, I mean, sell, I mean, grow their own food without mm-hmm. no company or corporation coming in and contaminating them. So people like us who don't have that luxury, we got to, you know, like you said, uh, goddess, uh, pray over our food and tell that food don't get make me sick. Right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> You know, we got to talk to it. Exactly. But I appreciate you guys Life letting over. me in because that's my two cents worth about the food and how we should grow and what our, what what's the impact of us having to be dedicated. I mean, the impact of us having to rely on grocery stores and these high price stores. Like you mentioned, mm-hmm. um, that store you just mentioned, I can't Whole think of the food. name. Whole, Whole Foods. You are like the cream of the crop when you go shop at that store and mm. like go on the these these uh, uh like uh, what's that store I went to the day that lady made me mad because she didn't make my chai right. What's that coffee shop everybody go to? <laughs> what but, Starbucks? Yes, I had to go cheat because my diet day start next week, so I'm gonna drink all the stuff I can today this week. <laughs> I went over there and asked that girl for a chai latte. I said, please make it extra hot. Give me eight pumps of chai and no water. Well, she made, gave me seven pumps and made it warm. I said, see, this is why I don't like dealing with you, Kay Beckys, because y'all don't know what y'all be doing. <laughs> oh, that is just oh, stores. Man. People go uh-huh. to them because they think they're healthier, when in fact they're not. They are, I think they're lured. So that was my point. You know, Starbucks, uh-huh. Whole Foods, um, the other store they got out there is real expensive. Mar- uh, Mor- is it not Martin's? Um, that other expensive store. Oh, uh, jeez, um, that means. Oh, I can't think of that. Other- Maryland or? They're in Virginia. Uh, I can't think of the name of that freaking store. Wegmans? But those stores, what is it called? Wegmans? Wegmans, Wegmans, those kinds of things. People go there and no, and they are definitely contaminating their foods too, just like they doing Safeway and Food Line. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But the only difference is you know. they got a little bit more quality food than they do in those other stores, but they still contaminate it all. Yeah, it, it's it's like it's like um, also fast food nation because not only have we gotten away from eating natural foods, um, like you know our grandparents and moms, you know. We're feeding us. We've turned to fast food as, you know, an alternative way to eat. I you know. know. And then not to mention that, you know, fast food, the symbolism that goes on um, what they would call sigils. Sigils are, def- are, are they're basically symbols that um, you can basically code these symbols and when someone sees this symbol, it can program a thought in the subconscious mind. Because, like, children. Children can be, like, one years old, two years old, and they'll know those golden arches. Yep. It's like a programming. You know, so... It is. Yeah, I mean, I remember my my um son started identifying. I was just like, how in the world did he know what McDonald's is? And he couldn't even talk. So, you know... The program is off early, you know. Starts in the subconscious mind. So, um, we feel like, you know, when I was eating fast food and I was working, it was just kind of feeling like it was a um addiction almost, like I had to eat there on my lunch break, I had to eat something out, you know. I had to um on the way home or something, or on the way in the morning. I might not even be hungry, but it's programming, you know. And McDonald's French fries, they have 19 chemicals in the French fries. 19 chemicals? You actually smoke them like cigarettes. Did y'all know that? Huh? You can smoke a French fry, McDonald's fry, like it's a cigarette. You can light it just like a cigarette. (laughs) Oh, 
my goodness. What? <laughs> Y'all haven't seen that? I mean, these people in the no. table will be telling it all. They took a cigar, a, a French fry, and, and broke off the end, lit a, a, a lighter to it, and puffed it and smoked it like a cigarette. Oh, oh wow. My <laughs> corn chips. Wow. Those corn chips, those corn puffs. Um, you can like those and it smell like cardboard. Oh, I tried I it in the house. And I'm like, I w- this guy, well, you know, I had some house guests, and like, he brought those corn, those curly chips in here. I said, oh, I wouldn't eat that if I was you. Why not? These are my favorite. I said, let me show you something. So I got a cigarette light, and I lit it. And I said, now smell that, what it smells like. He said, like cardboard. I said, that's exactly what you're eating. Mm. Oh. Wow. It goes deep. It yes, goes deep. yes, it does. Yes, it does. I'm telling you because, um, for me, French fries should only be if, you know, you're going to fry them, it should be oil and potatoes. <laughs> I don't know where the other 17 ingredients come from. <laughs> well, I think they put but, those chemicals in those foods like that to preserve them so they can last long because they're producing a mass, co- a mass production. You know what I mean? So they have to yeah. put something in those in that so-called potato to make that potato last long enough so they can make profit off of it. Wow. Wow. You wow. know, so there was another illustration that I saw that there was a guy, he was a butcher, who had a real cow. He had the cow chalked off in different parts. So this is the T-bone. This is the 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 um, the roast part of the, the cow, yada, yada. And he was showing different parts of this cow, how much it would cost for each part. So then he showed another part of that cow where it was all cut up. And he sh- he illustrated how they took parts and um, the, the, the scraps of that cow and added ammonia and some other stuffed fillers mm. to grind up and say and look just like ground beef. He said, "Now look at this. Oh. This is what you're eating." Mm. Mm. It's part ammonia and water with the scraps ammonia. that was left from the pig. Ammonia, and I've seen that before too, where they take and wash certain foods with ammonia to kill the bacteria. So what they also do when they wash this food with ammonia, they put a dye in it to give it that red color, and then they grind mm-hmm. it up in a grinder, and they package it up like it's hamburger. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's how you can yeah, tell it's I bad meat. That. When the grocery stores, the meat looks nice and red and pretty and plump. Take it home and flip it on the bottom and see how brown it is at the bottom and inside <laughs> the middle when it's turning brown because it's decaying. Oh, my God. What That's color poison. is the meat supposed to be? Is it supposed to be bright red? The steak and stuff supposed to be bright red? But it make it look real bright red like it's fresh, but it's actually dye. And they've already okay. made it look plump and beautiful with the, the, the fillers that they put in it. Mm. Now, mm-hmm. I think I would like to suggest a video that I do have here at the house. It's called Food, Inc. Oh, I yeah, watched I it one weekend, and I didn't before. eat for three days. I'm <laughs> Food, Inc. <laughs> yes, it's a DVD yeah, I that I could not purchase from my actual store. I had to order it online. And I, I heard about it, and I kept hearing about it from coworkers some time ago, and <clears throat> I went looking for it. So what I did was I went on Amazon and I found it and I purchased it. And um, when I got the DVD and I sat home one Saturday and watched it, I got sick and I didn't eat. I swear to you, I didn't eat for three days. I just drank water. I said, that's a shame. Oh, my God. Mm. OMG, what? They show how to mistreat animals, how they contaminate these animals. There were some chickens being slaughtered, and I swear to you I heard that chicken say, help, help, help me. Oh, I said, no. what? The chicken was oh, like, wow. help, help, help. I said, okay. Oh, wow. I need to stop eating but food this, for real. I'd rather just drink water. I ain't lying. I mean, <laughs> now that I'm thinking about food, <laughs> ink. I mean, yes, you may want to suggest that video. Uh, that okay. video was something else to watch. It made me really understand food. But, of course, I got over my fear, and I went back to eating again. <laughs> I was always cautious hey, about what I was eating. Good. Like, uh, no, no, thank you. And, and so you just got to remember old. that, like we said, with anything, it's, it's about balance because, you look, 
even with water. Water can be poisonous if, you know, if you drink too much of it and you end up with mm-hmm. hyponatremia. So it's like we have to, it's just everything is about balance and you don't want to gorge mm-hmm. on cheeseburgers all day or french fries or you know and mm-hmm. like i found out i believe a month or so ago about kale and how kale can have a toxic effect on you too and cause your stomach to blow and mm. um kind of mess with your digestive system and mm. i had been eating kale like every day making juices every day and i couldn't understand why you know I wasn't seeing improvement, and then it had made my skin dull, and I was like, what is going on? So I was looking, you know, just browsing around, and I found a nutritionist page, and she was talking about that. I said, oh, my gosh, that's what's been happening from the kale. So she was saying she advised people to only eat kale maybe once a week, you know, and drink lots of water so that um, you're able to, Flush it out But you know Like look Too much of anything Is not good for you That's true mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely Everything has to be In balance Even your mind You know Too many negative thoughts Is not good Too many positive thoughts Can be bad <laughs> Because you know mm-hmm. Think too positive then, You know You can wipe yourself out Just as easy As you think of Too many negative ones So You know mm-hmm. That's where the the um, saying um, let, what is it, let go and let God Comes from You know Because you know We can overthink something And then we can, and then we can um, Think real negative about it Or we can just think Too optimistic Over optimistic about something And sabotage it always It's just like everything just has to be With that fine line of balance you know, and sometimes I don't know how the hell we get are uh, supposed to get there in that fine line <laughs> because we be like okay, this manifested and this didn't manifest, you know. So I try to, like with me, I try to find that balance. But I really, I mean, you know, to me, it's sometimes you don't. You, it's the it, it happens mainly when I'm not thinking about it or you know I've just let the thought go. I put my my request out and just let it go. And then, you know, next thing you know, you're attracting everything that you asked for. It's just coming straight to you. Well, Goddesses, I'd like to share one more thing, and I, and I don't know if you have anybody else who's willing to ask or, or sip and tea, have a comment or a question. Is the, you know, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Oh, go ahead. Well, I heard, I saw a video on Facebook. I don't know how I became a Facebook queen all of a sudden because I just started, touch, you know, using it like two years ago. Now I'm like, I got to wake up to it and go to bed to it. Well, there was a postal here that talked about black people, melanated people, should use um, skin protection, whatever that stuff is that people put on their skin, um, sunblock, because uh-huh. we are more um, uh, at risk at uh, attracting skin cancer. I said, who told that lie? Oh, the higher up. Really? As I call them. <laughs> but the high, this is just the way that they, t- you got to remember, whatever they're saying to do, do the opposite. <laughs> Always. I mean, I didn't Don't believe that. Because I, I ran it. I went to an, amuse- an amusement park some years ago. And we were, uh, my company at the time, renting out the whole Six Flags uh, amusement amusement park. And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Was there were two kids, white guy, with two young kids. And uh, he, he was putting lotion all on, on their face, all over their legs. And I was standing there watching them. And I said, wow, that's a lot that you guys putting on. He said, yeah, you want some? You guys need to use it too. I said, no, I don't. I, 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 don't put that on my skin. My skin can handle that, son. Yours yeah. can't. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he beat me down yeah. to it. He argued with me like, no, you're supposed to protect your skin. I said, you're supposed to take your skin because I have the protection. Can't you see it? <laughs> he did not like that. I mean, that man had an argument in that park about melanated. Because, see, at the time, I wasn't where I am today. 
But I knew right, better that right. my skin had some kind of, had something special with the skin in order for it to, I love the sun. I love, it doesn't bother me. I'm an August baby, well, you know, so I can deal with the sun all day long in the summertime. Well, you know, there's a, there's a book by um, Kevin Trudeau. I know you all seen him on the infomercials when he was pushing that. Um, oh, yeah. That book, what was the name of that book about? Um Natural tears or something. Right. Yeah. Now he, mm-hmm. he claims he was in the Illuminati and you know, they brought him in and whatnot. Um of you know, I hate saying Illuminati, but it's uh that the good old boys club, the higher um that one percent that that control everything. He brought he was brought in that group and one of the secrets he revealed was that a lot of them live to be so old because they sunbathed. Mm. And I'm thinking that not only probably are they sunbathing, they're probably buying synthetic melanin as well to, um, you know, live even longer. And I've seen it, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I would see on TV how they die really old, like 99, you know, some to 100, um, you know. So, and he said that they sunbathe, you know. So, you know, that's why I said it's, an, it's just another myth. It's another lie. You know, don't don't believe that because, you know, you're just suppressing your melanin when you put the sunscreen on. So, you know, your body can't get those codes from the sun that it needs, you know, to download, you know, information. So I, would, I wouldn't mess with it. Okay. Yeah, I would well, not at all. Well, I appreciate you guys letting me be part of your your hosting team. <laughs> yes, our wonderful guest. Um, I think he had conflicting schedule issues, so um, cool. hopefully we can have him on um, later this month. Well, Goddess, can I you really... please have another show about the um, that Four Corners financial literacy that you had about a couple of weeks ago? Okay, we'll probably be touching on that within another two weeks or so. We had we had um, April booked up, so probably um, in May we'll be trying to get um, Mr. Mitchell back on to talk about more in depth about the, um, financial literacy because that was a very good show and it really okay. helped a lot of people. So we would definitely be doing that soon. Okay, you have Dr. Valentine on one time. I mean, one uh, you know, one show. You gonna book him? Yes. <laughs> yeah, like I said, we got some people lined up that we're gonna have on. It's really gonna kind of change this game on this show. So <laughs> be ready. Alrighty. Um, well, thank you. You're All right. welcome. Thank you, Goddess. You're welcome. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah, I think we have someone else with their hand up, Goddess. Let me okay. see. Hello, area code 912, question, comment, or sipping tea? Greetings, sisters. Greetings. Greetings, Greetings Goddess. Uh, this is uh, Nefra. I'm in Savannah, Georgia. And um, I'd like to make uh, a hi, couple of comments. Um, Mm -hmm. One, at the beginning of the show, you talked about, um, you know, having your seeds and everything and not really knowing what to do with them. Um, I wanted to share that I have the similar situation. I've had seeds for years, but I came across straw bale gardening. I'm not sure if you're familiar Mm -hmm. with that, but um, it's the process of getting a bale of straw and Uh um, wetting it for two weeks so that it can start to break down. Uh-huh. And then put and then put your your seedlings in the um, in little holes that you make in the straw. So I've started that process. I haven't put the seedlings in yet. I'm waiting for my straw to continue to break down. So uh-huh. it's like the straw is like above the ground. So there's there, there's supposedly no weeds, no bending over, um, uh-huh. and just another process. So the nutrients for the seedlings are supposed to come from the straw as it breaks down. So I will keep you updated to see if this is really going to work out. 
But if you want to check it out, <laughs> go to Straw Bell Gardening. And um, I thought Bell it was fascinating. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Okay. Now, because would somebody be able to use it, like, if they have an apartment or they would need, like, to have a backyard? No, you don't have to have anything but the straw. If you had, like, oh. a rooftop garden, you can put the bales of straw on the on the top of the roof or on the porch or wherever you want to put it. And that, that's what's so fascinating about it. Um, oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. I see pictures of it. I just Googled. Yeah, it's wow. Not awesome. Yes. That <laughs> what, what, is, that what is seeds awesome. are you planting? Uh, today I what planted, seeds? I'm well, I'm starting some seedlings. I, I, what I do is I'll go buy an organic bell pepper, take uh-huh. the seeds out and dry them. So I have my own organic okay. Seeds. So I planted bell pepper uh-huh. today, but not in the straw yet. I just put it in a in the soil, some soil that I purchased, some uh, starter soil. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I just put it in that. So when they started when they start sprouting out, then I'm going to transfer it to the straw. Okay. And just okay. sit it down in the straw, and I got my straw already sitting in a nice sunny location. Because part of my problem <laughs> was that I didn't really have enough sun coming in the backyard. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. And so on the side of the house, there's there's lots of sun. So I, I've got some tomato plants and some um, green beans that I've already put in the soil. So as soon as they get maybe about four or five inches tall, I'm going to transfer them to the straw to see if this really is going to work for me. Now, what I'm thinking <laughs> might be the problem is that my straw is not tightly bound. If you're looking at it, you see how the straw is all tight. Uh-huh. It looks like yes. a, it looks like a real strong bit. Mine is kind of loose, so I was kind of wondering if that was going to make a difference. But um, this is my trial period, so I'll I'll make the adjustments. Oh yeah, I'm excited to hear how that works out because uh, yes, it, like a, I, it, it just seems like an uh, excellent alternative to you know get things moving. Definitely, mm-hmm. definitely, definitely. So is this Ann? Because I've recognized this voice. Um, no. No. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, well. Anyway, um, um, I wanna, I wanna talk about one more thing, and then I'm not gonna take your time. I don't oh, know yeah, how long you should you. be on. The other it's one, fine. when, when the, the sister who just hung up talked talked about um, getting the mushroom, and I'm I'm really grateful for that information. This is my really very first time ever hearing about a chaga mushroom, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that is so yeah. fascinating. It is so. I mean, I'm telling you, sister, because when I first when I first started the research on it, and I kept it was like going down a rabbit hole. You get excited, like, why mm-hmm. is this being talked about? It's like it has right. so many health benefits, and and the fact that it's so old, it's so ancient, you know. Wow, and um, like I said, they were they. Mm-hmm. I mean, the Asians they they had documented that. You know the ones that the poor ones that were drinking this to survive, they were living to be up in the eighties and nineties. You know, right? And people that were eating guess, regular. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I guess they want to. I mean, call these secrets or something. But everything is yeah. getting revealed now, so I think we really don't really have to kind of worry about you know all the toxins mm-hmm. and all the problems because everything yeah. is getting revealed. And if you want to know, you really can find out. But um, when she talked about um, taking the mushroom for, um, you know, the the weight and getting toned and all that, I wanted to say to her, um, in the interim, while we're waiting on the mushroom, what we have to really be concerned about is the kinds of oils we're eating. My research is showing me that it is these oils that we're eating. We're not mm. we're eating hydrogenated oils. Okay. Like okay. canola. Uh, Twenty years ago, oh. there was no such animal as canola oil. This is and a you product know what? that is Why is made. that oil so popular? That is a popular oil that's promoted. You know, it I seems think like it's it, the marketing. It like it, yeah, it's the mm-hmm. marketing. I think it's the marketing. Just like they marketed soybean, and you know, they had all of us doing the soybean stuff and. And once mm-hmm. upon a time, the soybean was only fed to pigs, and then it became the the guru of everything. <laughs> and now it's like it's got too much estrogen, and you know it's just all of that. Yeah. But um, I am a big coconut oil promoter. 
Um, I do oh, know yes. that coconut oil takes takes that fat from around the abdomen, the belly part. It does, but okay. you have, and and you don't really have to change a whole lot of other stuff you do except. If you're frying foods, fry it in coconut oil, put that canola away, put that western oil mm-hmm. away, put that vegetable oil away, um, all of those hydrogenated ones that they're processing. Okay. And, okay. and use coconut or palm oil. And what happens with coconut oil is, and I, I, I take coconut oil every single day. Okay. I take okay. it I take it by mouth, you know, I take tablespoons by mouth. And what what coconut oil does is when you swallow it, it doesn't go to your stomach. It goes okay. directly to the liver. Mm. Directly. Wow, and that's can, good to know. You can feel your energy. You can feel the energy increase. You will say like, "Wow, where did I get all this energy from?" If you take mm-hmm. coconut oil like six o'clock in the evening, you're gonna be up till midnight. Wow! But, and but that, that's, and that's, that's a beautiful. Piece. Yeah, and that was I'm, that was beautiful that you shared that because it's something that simple that can do so much for the body and especially the liver because you know mm-hmm. that's one of the major organs that's affected. And we we were just talking about the liver the other day, you know, because mm-hmm. a way to tell that you have imbalances is if the whites of your eyes are yellow, yellow right? Colors. Exactly. So right. That right. And, and I did not even know that, so I'm just thankful that you called and gave that to you a bit. Because I know, <laughs> I think we can say we know a few people with that, <laughs> that yellow around the eyes. You know, oh, definitely, simple. definitely. You know, because it's kind of. Uh huh. Go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Oh no, I was just going to say, you know, it's kind of hard to get people to change the way they've been, you know, living and doing things for so long. But to make little baby steps that can have big changes in their life, you know, I just think that's a Beautiful thing. So by you just giving that that little tidbit on the on the um, coconut oil, mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. something we you know we can pass on that can you Most know definitely. do a lot for somebody. Yeah. Well, you know, here, here's the interesting thing about coconut oil is this, and I get a lot of resistance uh, to coconut oil, particularly with my own family. And I was so elated that you all kind of helped me to calm down about my own family who they just can't see the merit in what I'm saying, even mm-hmm. though they see the results of what I'm saying, they still can't and won't buy in. And if I don't do it, it doesn't get done. So right, my only right. out was, now this is really not good, but my out was, well, I'm just not going to stay around and see you suffer, so I'll just stay mm-hmm. away. And I know that's mm-hmm. not the answer. And you answered that for me, just love them anyway. That yes. is so mm-hmm. hard for me to see suffering when I really believe there doesn't have to be the suffering. But everybody yes. writes their own script, and I know that, and it's still so hard. <laughs> but I, but what I was going to say is that even if you you can't take the coconut oil by mouth because it's oil, mm-hmm. yes, it is oil. I've learned how to take a tablespoon and just swallow it. Yeah, it is oily. Yeah. It is greasy. But the results, even if you can't do that, you can rub it all over your skin from head to toe, and it mm-hmm. still goes into the body. Yeah. So and there's really no excuse benefits. for people, you know. There's no excuse. Mm-hmm. Here, here's the other point. Now, this is so awesome, too. If you haven't uh-huh. heard of oil oil pulling, you got to check out oil pulling. Oh, oh yes. We've heard about that. Yes. I can't. that. And my mouth Isn't that awesome? Clean afterwards. Isn't it awesome? It is it so awesome. It is. It takes yes, a little yes, longer yes. than brushing your teeth, but it's better than putting those chemicals in your mouth with the fluoride and, and Definitely. Food. God knows only what else they put in the toothpaste. So that's a wonderful alternative to it, keeping your you mouth know, clean and the bacteria. And it even is really helping. It even helps to tighten your teeth if they're loose in the gum. Mm. I am a witness. Wow. I've done these things. And it's like, um, I, you know, I grew up not taking little pink aspirins. I just gagged on those things. I remember as four years old, I refused to take any medications. 
and I still uh-huh. don't take medications. Um, I've suffered a bit from not taking them and not listening to doctors. I really have suffered, and I have scars to show for it. But I was mm-hmm. adamant, you know, those are chemicals. You made those in the laboratory. Yes, you know, you um, mm-hmm. If mm-hmm. I'm bleeding or if I'm, uh, you know, then, then help me. But other than that, I think I can do it a different kind of way. Absolutely. I mean, we have to really think about, you know, during our grandparents' times and their parents. Yeah. I mean, these chemicals weren't even around, and, and they lived pretty healthy lives, you know, mm-hmm. just by mm-hmm. growing this, you know, growing organic food and eating clean. And they might have their they vices, did. but they weren't killing off from all of these diseases that's going on right now. <laughs> all these new diseases you know? and disorders and... <laughs> And, and we claim them, my my arthritis and my fibromyalgia. Yes. And I got my this and I got my oh my gosh. And they oh, and, but you know what? Those are the people that love those. They that's their thing. That's their security. My cancer. Yes. My this. Right. My that. You know you can have that, but you know the more you speak that into your um. Into your spirit, mm-hmm. that's what you're going to become. A okay? cancer. That's what you're going to become. become. Yep. <laughs> yep. 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 Because I always had to get yep. on my girl Tony Braxton because you know she vibrates to having lupus and yeah. she calls it my lupus, my lupus. Wow. My, but you know, the, and listen, I just the think, programming is mm-hmm. deep. The programming. It's not. It's not our fault. The programming is deep. It's deep. It is. And it's getting deeper and deeper. It it's is, just deeper it, it, and deeper. Yep. And, yep, and yep. All, all we can do, you know, is it's like you hate to see that because, you know, you can have all this money and fame and fortune and still be the, the emptiest person and still don't know your power and your worth and your mm-hmm. value. Mm-hmm. You oh, know? Yeah. So wow. we like like we said, we just still love you from afar. You know? Right. <laughs> In exactly. The meantime, you know, and well, this is great, and I own. thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Oh, sure, and sure. sure. We're thankful for you called, and thanks yeah, for that information. And, you know, we love learning from each other. You know, we are, we don't come on here thinking we know everything. We we love to hear from the listeners and hear their input because mm-hmm. you know that's what it's about: exchanging information and and helping each other and learning from each other. So we just value your input. And, Really, thank you for oh, calling. Thank you. Thank you. Right. I'll, I'll look out night. for next um, next next week. Is it next Tuesday? You you'll be on. Yes, and we're on Thursdays too. So who who are we oh, have okay, on this Thursday? On this gal. We have. Uh, I think I believe Mr. Two Air is on. Okay, so okay, I'll Tuer, look for your um, your post. Yeah, he's great. So you you really enjoy the show. So we're on Thursdays from nine to eleven. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Great. Tuesdays and Thursdays. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thanks so much, Goddess, for calling, and you have a wonderful okay. night. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Yes, that was some good information from that guy. It was. Please. Just looking at these pictures, I've just been scrolling through, and it's just it's amazing what people have been able to grow in a bell of straw. I'm like, wow! Someone even <laughs> made a um, it looks like they made like a little greenhouse out of the straw, and they kind of made a window using wood, and they did like a roof, a slanted roof with the wood. It's just amazing what um. We can do. We're just such creative beings, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, for anybody that's just coming on and tuning in, um, the goddess that just called in, she gave us some wonderful information on um, this website called StrawBellGardens dot com. Mhm. Is it S T R A W B A L E? Yes. Wait, wait a minute, Halissa. Yeah, was it the strawbell dot com or strawbell garden? Um, I ended up. You, you know what? I just I googled strawbell gardening, and that's how I got the pictures. But I saw some books come up also. 
So I believe okay. someone wrote a book on it, but you'll see a bunch of pictures. So me, I'm a visual person, so I always go to images first to see what it looks like, and you'll get a good idea of um, this uh, this um, type of garden procedure, which is great. This is something. Yeah. Because, you know, we do have people that live in small spaces and areas um, that still want to be able to uh, grow at least some of their food. You know, you know, it's mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's not going to be every, you know, you're not going to be able to grow a whole farm or anything. But if you can at least get some of your uh, organic food and be able to grow it, in small spaces, this looks like it's a great alternative. So, just check out Straw Bill. Start. Now they have two Straw Bill Gardening. I'm, okay, B A L E Straw Bill Gardening. Okay. Yes. Mhm. And I mean, All I was right. saying it's a great alternative. Just think about if you could grow your own herbs and make your own herbal teas and. Mm-hmm. Extracts and at least um, be able to grow things like bell peppers, like the goddess was saying, or um, what else? What some other easy things to grow? Yeah, I love I think, herbs. You know, I mm-hmm. love stuff like rosemary, basil, dill, peppermint. Because mm-hmm. yeah, peppermint. Um, because what I like to do with my herbs is put them in olive oil and let them soak. And then when you use that olive oil on your vegetables or fish, chicken, it just takes the flavor to another level. So that's something, you know, easy you can start off with, um, you know, planting as herbs, I think. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. That sounds like a great idea. All right, then. Let's go to these phone lines. Okay. Okay. I don't know. You see someone with their hand up, Mystic? Okay. Oh, those were just added callers. Okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Yeah. And I just want to apologize to... Okay, okay, wonderful. I just wanted to apologize because we were supposed to have <clears throat> Energy Matters on, but I think it was a conf- conflict of scheduling. So um, hopefully we'll be able to have him on again really. I mean, I'm fine. I, I didn't mean again, but we'll have him on soon because um, tonight's show topic, I, I really believe like all of our people need to be on this call because, you know, what's going on with, our food that's um, harming our bodies. We need to be more self-sufficient. You know, we just we're just in such a microwave type nation. You know, everything we want yeah. it fast. So, you know, and sometimes we just gotta, um, you know, do things the way that nature intended. You know, that's working right. with Mother Earth. You know, getting back to the root of things. You know, and that's one way that we can do it by connecting back, especially women, you know, because we do the herbs, the herb, um, the healing, you know, pretty sure people had grandmothers and mothers that, you know, will put something together and put their energy into it and and whip it, whip you up something when you're feeling bad. Like when we were growing up, our grandmother used to give us molasses, and I want to say sulfur. It might sound crazy. But she no, I believe it was. Was it sulfur or was it tur- you talking about the turpentine? <laughs> well, yes, yeah, she would give us turpentine and sugar for every day, mm-hmm. or she would give us um, molasses, and it was like molasses. And I, I distinctly remember it was yellow powder, and I believe it was sulfur. But she would give us this for um, like a tune-up because we never were sick growing up. Mm-mm. So I'm no. just thinking something must have worked. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> along with the castor oil, whew, yeah. I can remember specifically 
Oh, my God. And me, I was the type of child I didn't like swallowing pills or anything, and I would gag, and, you know, that would be a whole <laughs> <laughs> dramatization that <laughs> Uh, there would be a drama that played out, you know, but, um, yeah. yeah, I remember that. I remember the um, turpentine on the spoon with the sugar, and that was for worms. So we, yeah, we, we have, you know, we kind of been through it all. We've been on this holistic journey for a while now, so... It's like just between, I guess, the last couple of years, things have really just become more clearer for us, and we've been able to really um, just go back and kind of reminisce about things that my grandmother did to keep us healthy as we were growing up. And so that was part of one of the reasons why we wanted to start the show and just be able to help other people with things that we've learned on our journey. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, because it's, it's like every day, you know, you learn something new, and especially, you know, our people who are, you know, not plugged in, I'll say, to the matrix of things and, and, and stuck in their thinking, and, and and it's okay because you're going to encounter people who are going to stay stuck in their thinking, and the way I like to look at it is that it's designed for them to be that way. So I just preserve my energy, you know. Um, you know, I stay true to myself. But at the same time, you know, you don't want to press your belief on others because they're not going to receive it. I know when I was in the church and everything, if somebody came and told me all of this stuff I know now, I would not receive it, you know. <laughs> I just know I would not because the time wasn't right for me to. So, Mm -hmm. you know, on your journey, you start to mature and you you start to learn that, you know, it's okay, you know, if somebody doesn't believe the same thing you believe. um, Because if everybody, like I always say, if everybody believed in the same thing or the same principles, if we all believed in that, then wouldn't life be dull, wouldn't, Things be boring. We wouldn't have anything to strive for. We wouldn't have anything, you know, to to keep us getting up in the morning. Things would get boring, you know. So you definitely want to kind of look at it from from a different perspective. Shift your pers- your perspective on on things. If somebody isn't into what your you know your belief system is. Mhm. Mhm. Yeah. yeah. No. I kind of received confirmation on that the other day. I had a reading with John Christopher, if you don't know who who that is, um, one of our good friends of the show, one of our sister goddesses, Jamila Shabazz, and she channels light energy, John Christopher. So I had a reading with them on Sunday, and... What we were talking about earlier in the show, what Mr. Feather just kind of touched on again, is when people are kind of just, you know, stuck in their, you know, ways, well, how we see it, but really that's the script that they wrote. And I was discussing this with John Christopher, and he was just telling me this is where the person wants to be on their journey. This is what they want to do this time around, and to just honor where they are at and you know sometimes you may you may not want to say you're right but they would love for you to say oh you're right about this and that because they won't take you know information coming from me so just he said just honor them where they're at and just show love basically because after all people wrote they they write their own story, so you just have to, you know, just respect that. Just respect people and where they're at and don't get upset and don't let it, you know, don't try to, don't try to carry their weight on your shoulders because it, it'll be too much and then you'll start feeling what they're feeling and you don't want to, you know, repeat, you know, those patterns that they're repeating, so... We just have to learn 
unconditional love for people where they're at. And I think if everybody did that, would be okay. You know, sometimes you can be on that path and it's like, oh, gosh, why is she doing this? I want to control. I just don't. Why? But you can't. You have to respect people. <laughs> right. The joys of this journey, I tell you. <laughs> yes. Okay. Because <laughs> sometimes, you know. <laughs> I'm you want to shake okay. it You want to shake it out of them. Wake up, you know. But you can't. You can't. Yeah. You can't. So. Yeah. And that's and that's and that's the beautiful part of this journey. Just encountering people where they are, encountering them on their um on um. I'm sorry, meeting people where they at. You know, and and then trying to figure out creative ways of dealing with these people, you know, because we are co-creators with the creator. So, you know, when we don't, when we can't create anything anymore, then you know, we lose our, you know, our zest, our zest for life. So, when you encounter what we consider, what we call problems, don't look at them as problems. Just look at them as situations you got to get creative with. You know, the the boss yelling in your ear. You know, get creative with them. Remember, you're you are writing this story. You know, you are, you have power over your life. You know, you can take somebody that is irate and screaming and yelling at you, and you can bring them right back down to your level by thinking of outside of the box. Instead of going back and forth with them, you can take them to a different level by using another creative method to deal with that situation, you know, maybe talking in a soft tone or, you know, because remember how people act towards you is their experience, but how you treat that person, that's your path, just like yeah. it's vice versa with that Powerful. person, you know. So when you when you keep that in mind, be like, oh, you, you can, it's, it's easier for you to say, okay, this is my path. You know, I'm responsible for how I react to this situation. And and when I can respond to this situation without um, doing it in that same pattern that that person is used to, that's when you regain your power back. That's when that person yeah. can't have any power over you or take anything away from you. And, and, and that's part of our journey, remembering that we are powerful beings beings on this earth. And that's um to me that's that's something that is easier said than experiencing, but once you own it, it's so many people who are living it, you know. Surround yourself with those type of people because that energy will bring your energy to that level. Yes. You know. Most on that yeah, on that note, we're sorry, listeners, that Energy Matters wasn't on. Once again, we apologize, but <clears throat> uh, he had um, scheduling issues, I believe. So uh, we will be trying to get him back, get him to, I'm sorry, get him to come on our show so you all can get it from an expert. <laughs> We weren't really prepared to do a two-hour show tonight, but, you know, we hope we uh, gave you some knowledge and, and, we, and we're thankful that we received knowledge from you listeners as well. So mm-hmm. we're at the top of the hour, and we don't want blog talk to cut us off like they've been doing. So we just want to thank you all for listening, and please tune in on Thursday night. When we would have two air and holistic guy, you want to go into a little bit about um, two air specialty? Oh, two air is just awesome. He is a beautiful soul. Yeah. Anytime you see him, he's dressed in all white, and he just has this glow about him. And we are so excited to have him on our show. His um. His um, expertise is in astrology, and he loves it, and he loves to answer questions. So I want you to make sure that you tune in and you're listening and you press that number one and have your questions ready because 
it's going to be awesome. We've been wanting to mm-hmm. get him on for a while. We connected with him a couple of weekends ago, and it's going to be on and popping. So don't forget to tune in Thursday night to visit with our friend to air. Mm-hmm. And we're going to call it a night, guys. We're going to go out with some Ivy Hilton. Remember to... um. Like our Facebook page, and add, you can send a request to the Goddess Suite group. I'm Holistic Gals. You can find me on Facebook. I'm on YouTube, play around on Instagram, um, Twitter. Just type it in. You'll find me, Holistic Gals, or either Hope Prior. And I want to say love and light. All right, and if you have any qu- uh, questions or show requests, send them to uh, goddesssweet at gmail.com, and that's goddesssweet at gmail.com. All right. All right, peace and love. <laughs>